you've probably heard of water cooling by now. It's become immensely popular along with overclocking. The two go hand in hand really, and it only takes intuition to figure out that this is a superior method of cooling than air cooling, which is what most CPUs use. But what exactly does it do? How is it different? And most importantly, should you get it to ensure your gaming experience is the best it could possibly be? If any of these questions have been bothering you, then you've come to the right place. So stick around to find out. Let's take a look at how these two cooling solutions operate, starting with air cooling. Now, the way an air cooler works is really quite simple. It relies on two key components, the heatsink and the fan. The heatsink is there to draw heat away from the CPU, and it's made of highly thermoconductive materials to do this, usually aluminum or a combination of aluminum and copper. But no matter how thermoconductive these materials are, there's only so much heat that they can absorb. This is where the fans come into play. It spins to blow air into the heatsink and make sure it doesn't overheat. Now, liquid cooling is a fair bit more complicated. We can say that it has four key components, as opposed to two. And these are the pump, the hose, the radiator, and the fan. The idea here is the same as air cooling, only instead of blowing air through the heatsink, it pumps water or any other liquid coolant through the hoses that connect to the CPU. But just circulating the water around isn't enough. It also needs something to absorb the heat, which is where the radiator comes in. And finally, there's a fan to keep the radiator from overheating. So now that we know how it is that these two work, let's take a look at some of the other factors you need to keep in mind before deciding which one is for you. For the purposes of this video, we'll be judging them based on their cooling efficiency, price and convenience. Let's be honest here, there'd be no point in liquid cooling even existing if it weren't more efficient. A much higher volume of water can be circulated more easily than air, that's just a fact. Liquid cooling is more powerful and more efficient than air cooling will ever be, but you should ask yourself whether you need the extra cooling at all. If you're running your CPU in factory setting, then there's absolutely no need to get liquid cooling, you just wouldn't get anything out of it. And the same goes for some light overclocking. Liquid cooling only ever becomes necessary if you plan on pushing your CPU to the Limit. That's why we said that overclocking and liquid cooling go hand in hand. And it's not like you should ever buy liquid cooling just for your peace of mind. The manufacturing costs for it are way bigger than they are for air cooling, and the difference between two can amount to hundreds of dollars. So it's definitely not something you should buy just cuz. And finally, we have to consider how convenient these coolers are. They're ease of use, if you will. And without really getting too far into details, let's just say that installing and maintaining a liquid cooling setup will be an absolute hell unless you're experienced in dealing with computer hardware. Air cooling, on the other hand, is very easy to use and clean. You just put it in place and take it out every once in a while to blow the dust out. And with all of this in mind, which cooling solution is better? We'll have to go with air cooling here, just because it's more convenient, much cheaper and it really will be more than sufficient unless you're overclocking. And this isn't to say that liquid cooling is bad, far from it actually, but it does have a much narrower demographic. From our perspective, there are only a few reasons you should ever cough up the extra money for a liquid cooler. The first one is overclocking, and I really think we don't have to explain why liquid cooling is better for this any longer. There will simply come a point when air will no longer be able to keep up with your CPU, and when this happens, water is the way to go. Alternatively, if you don't want to deal with the noise that air cooling makes, then that's as good a reason as any to buy a liquid cooling system if you feel it's worth the investment. And finally, you should consider investing in a liquid cooler if you're using a mini ATX case, or even a micro ATX case with airflow problems. Liquid cooling needs much less air to keep the CPU temperature low, so it won't really mind the poor airflow. And there you have it, everything you should know about liquid and air cooling if you're a casual user. We hope that we've dispelled some of the notions you may have had regarding these coolers, especially the fact that air cooling isn't nearly as bad as it might seem. Let us know down in the comments which of these two you use and how they've been working out for you. And as always, if you find this video helpful, don't forget to like and subscribe and we'll see you in the next video.